this is the kind of riding right here that makes me wish I had opted for the power steering. I'll tell you what, man, this thing will wear you out when you're on rocks. <laughs> Very slick. something for this Honda Rancher even though it's got man that's a rough ride even though it's got little bitty teeny tiny tires on it it does go pretty well in terrain like this I mean you can pretty much just point and shoot and this thing will go wherever you want it to these days I'm gonna put some bigger tires on this and then it'll be really awesome those rock ledges are actually pretty fun to climb up because there's so much moss down in the creek that it's really slippery sideways here. So here's the tricky part because this is where they're building the new bridge and it's the water's kind of deep in there but it's not too bad. We just got to figure out which part of that ledge to go up. Are you going first? Me? Alright, I guess I'm going to go first. they've had an excavator in here and they've turned all this up it used to be pretty easily passable but now they've turned it all up and I think the excavators actually made this part deeper than it used to be but like I said it's not bad it'll come up like right up on where my shoes are so I just lift my feet up so my feet don't get wet and it's fine doing this with uh, one hand so I'm gonna put the camera down so we can get on up out of here so I made it through just fine of course because this machine's four-wheel drive but obviously his isn't so I'm gonna stay here and make sure he doesn't need a winch line to get up this ledge right here it's it's a pretty bad one it's not all that steep it's just tall and these machines have little tires so it makes it a little difficult to navigate For a 14 year old boy, he does pretty good, but sometimes he's still a little bit timid. I think he could make it up that just fine if you just give it a little bit of momentum in first gear, but we'll see. He might want me to just throw a line out there. There you go. <laughs> good job, buddy. Woo. All right, now we can turn around. I can turn around and we can get out of here talk to you guys later well guys now it's spring and it's time to get ready for the car shows and car cruises so i do a lot of work around here gosh i'm busy all the time but when we finally get into those warm weather months in the year uh you know you got to blow off some steam somehow right so what we kind of enjoy to do other than going camping and four-wheeling we like to go to car shows and car cruises which you know is one of the big reasons why i picked up this really sweet specimen of a dodge challenger and so now i got to decide what to do with this car um, and what i mean by that is do i modify it or do i kind of try to preserve 
the originality of it? Uh, it's kind of a tough question. Uh, if you watch the video where I showed you the car for the first time, you might have caught the little detail that this one is one of one built exactly like this. According to Dodge Customer Care, I sent them the VIN number and that's what they wrote back and told me that in the United States, this one was the only one built exactly like this. Now, there were other challengers in this color. There were other challengers with that white stripe on there. There were other challengers with leather seats. But as a, co a combination, you know, like a total combo, all the, the options, the features, the color, you know, you put it all together in one big ball of wax, and this one is the only one exactly like it. And that kind of gives the car a little bit of originality and uniqueness. And uh, one of the other things that I mentioned was that I bought this car with the Hemi because... They keep telling us that next year's it. They're not going to make the Hemi anymore. It's going away. Uh, a lot of that is for emissions reasons, they say. Um, you know, and there's this push for uh, electric vehicles coming down the road as well. So anyway, I don't want to get into all that right now. But the point is the Hemi V8s, as we've known them for so long, are soon going to be going away. And I wanted to get one while they're still easy to get because uh, I figure that once they actually stop making them the prices on these are going to probably start to go up um, they're going to be a little harder to find so i wanted to go ahead and get one um, anyway bottom line is do i kind of preserve the originality of the car or do i start modifying it you know one of the things i really need to do is get some kind of a wider tire on the back of this car because right now it just blows them off as soon as you get into the throttle the tires just go up and smoke I mean, you know, these cars came with two 45, 45 tires on them, which are really narrow. Uh, people will tell me that these wheels are eight inches wide. I haven't taken one off the car to measure it, so I'm just going to go with what they're telling me. It's a 20 by eight wheel. So a 245 is uh, pretty much what you're looking at as being, uh, you know, a good fit for this wheel. Although I've seen a lot of guys do 275s on them. Um, but really what I'd like to do is get at least a 295, maybe a 305 under here and try to get some more contact patch on the road because these things just will not hold the Hemi power. Um, you know, in these cars, obviously this is the, the entry level Hemi. So it's not like a, you know, mind blowing amount of power, but even the five, seven Hemi will just completely blow these tires off. So you know, I got to figure out what I'm going to do there. Um, the problem I'm running into is being an eight inch wide wheel, I can't go beyond a 275, right? Uh, but you can't get that exact wheel in anything wider. Now, there are some companies that make this style of wheel, but they're chrome. You know, you can get this wheel and it's filthy right now, so uh, I need to wash it. Uh, but this is a polished aluminum finish with a clear coat on it is what this is. And you can't get this style of wheel in the aftermarket in a polished finish. Um, I found a, a couple of companies that are making these in a chrome finish, which is really close. But the chrome, um, you know, let's say I bought a couple of those in like a 20 by 10 or a 20 by 11 size in a chrome finish. And I put those on the back and I still have the polished ones in the front, right? Well, I'm, I'm worried that you're going to be able to notice that, you know, the, the chrome is going to have a little bit of a different shine to it uh, than the, the polished. So it'll be really close, but there will be a little bit of a visual difference there. Um, so I don't know, you know, I, I could do that or I could just get a whole new set of wheels altogether. Uh, but if I do that, then I'm kind of destroying the originality of the car because these wheels are part of the RT Classic package, right? So man, I just don't know. You know, decisions, decisions. Job number one is going to be to take care of the little bit of body rust and the camera may not do this justice, but right here you can see some rust. Um, now on the other side of the car, I took this plastic liner out. You know, this is right in front of the rear tire, by the way. Uh, I took this plastic liner out and I noticed that from the factory, there's a layer of insulation in here. It looks a whole lot like a, a carpet pad, uh, you know, like that layer of padding you'd put down on your floor in your house before you lay the carpet. 
that's what it looked like. And it's just kind of laying in here and it holds water. So like about from here down was soaking wet and full of dirt. And when I took it out, a whole lot of dirt fell out. And you can see on the seam inside the unibody there, where it's starting to rust on the other side already. Now, clearly this one's to the point where it's already rusting because the paint's bubbling up. So I got to get this fixed uh, before it gets worse. And I'm going to have the body shop take out all of that insulation that's on the inside. There's no reason for it to be there. I don't know why Dodge put it there to start with. Probably had something to do with NVH concerns, um, but it's not necessary. And all it does is create problems. So I'm gonna have that insulation removed, get that body work fixed and get that painted. Um, I kind of hate to have this car painted on because it's such a unique color. You know, they made this color for, you know, I don't know what, four years, five different model years they offered this color. Uh, the 2011 was the first year they did it. It was a $1,000 upcharge in that particular year. Uh, but this is the original paint. I kind of hate to have it painted on, but I gotta do something about that rust. It has to be fixed. So. That's going to be job number one. And then I guess when I get the car back from the body shop, then I will start working on these rear tires and try to figure out what I'm going to do there. Got to get some traction on the ground. I would really love to put a limited slip differential in this thing, but it's a whole lot more of a job on these cars because you got to take that rear cradle out and completely swap out the differential uh, for one that came with limited slip in it which means you also have to swap out axle shafts and you probably will need a new drive shaft. And it just turns into a domino effect that costs a tremendous amount of money. Um, so I'm gonna do the tires first and then see if I can get enough traction out of that mod to maybe get away with not needing a limited slip differential. And then I guess the next order of business will be some sort of a tune because I really hate the multi-displacement system that they put on these cars. Um, you can feel it when it kicks in and out between four cylinder and eight cylinder mode. It's very noticeable. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation that the timing chain recall that was issued on a lot of these cars had something to do with that MDS system. Allegedly only the cars with MDS, which would be the automatics, uh, were affected by those timing chains that were snapping and wiping out the engines. So there's a lot of people who felt like the MDS system caused that to happen. I just don't like it at all, and I'm gonna try and find some way to tune that out. Uh, so that's definitely something that I've got to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now, I'm just kind of in that mode where I'm doing maintenance on it. Uh, changed all the spark plugs, did the transmission fluid and filter, rear end fluid. Uh, gotta get a little body work done. So I'm just doing maintenance on it, getting it ready to go right now. And along the way, I'll just kind of decide, you know, how wild or how mild I want to stay with this car since it's such a, I don't know, unique piece. It's funny because like I said, there's a million of these on the road. You see them all the time. So it's kind of surprising, you know, just how uncommon certain combinations are with these things. I find it kind of interesting that this car came with the Borla Touring exhaust, which is the mildest exhaust kit that Borla offered. And they claim that it has no drone. That was their guarantee, no drone in the cab. Well. I can tell you for sure that when you're inside this car, that exhaust definitely drones. It'll give you a serious headache at certain RPMs. So anyway, uh, what do you guys think we should do with this thing? Should we make it crazy? Put a supercharger kit on it and some uh, crazy wheels and tires and just make it wild? Or should I kind of stay on the milder side with it and keep it dependable and reliable and uh, you know, just do some, some, you know, lighter types of mods with it and, and uh, maintain the originality of the car. Gosh, look at all that gravel dust. That's the disadvantage of living out in the country. Gravel dust all over the car all summer. I go through a lot of water and soap washing these things. The Toyota Tundra has been parked for a while because gasoline prices are out of control and the weather's been great. So I've been driving this car a little bit and man, I love this thing. So you'll probably see some more of this on the channel this summer and I uh, might even do some videos from the race tracks that we go to, the big car cruises and car shows. I enjoy this kind of thing, guys. It's the end of an era. Can't believe that we actually went through another muscle car era. This one lasted, gosh, 10 years, 
almost 15 years. But it's almost over with, so let's soak it up while we can, right? So I've always been a kind of a, a Mopar guy. Well, you know, at least for the last 20 years or so. Uh, grew up being a hardcore Ford fan. Um, but then somewhere around 2002, 2003, uh, I guess I just converted. I don't know. I just really have uh, enjoyed the Mopar products since then. You know, all the Chrysler brands, you know, the Ram trucks have been awesome for the last 20 years. They've been amazing uh, when they brought these cars back out. The new four door Wrangler, I remember the first time I saw those when they started hitting the dealership lots. You know, that company, uh, uh, they've gone through ownership changes several times <clears throat> over the last 20 years, but I feel like they've always built products. Uh, that, that more align with what people want. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like Ford got rid of all their cars except the Mustang. GM has just made complete junk for the last 30 years. Uh, but the Chrysler brands continue to make stuff that people want. I mean, cool cars like this, like the Hellcats, you know, and the Demons, and, uh, you know, the, the Jeep Wranglers and the Gladiators with the diesel engines now, and Power wagons, the TRX, you know, we can go on and on and on. They, they really make a lot of awesome vehicles that people just really enjoy. And uh, it's really kind of sad to, uh, to hear them talking about getting rid of the Hemi, but like I said, that's just the way it goes. Well, you guys can leave some comments below. Let me know if you even care or not about the Challenger. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.